Hi there, welcome to episode 228 of Rook. Keep faith, dear fellow Iranians, and stay the course. Keep faith because optimism is a powerful force. I'm Gian Gomeshi. Hello to you from Toronto. Salam dustan aziz. Durud bashama. Keep faith that hope is our revolutionary source, and optimism is a powerful force. It's a brand new year. And for Iranians around the world, 2022 was a mixture of inspiration and devastation. It's been four months since the arrest and killing of Massa Amini, and the uprising has been something profound that has transformed us all forever. And if you are Iranian, you know that it almost seems to be in your DNA to be cynical or skeptical or downhearted about what new paths can possibly reach. 43 years of a terrorist regime can understandably lead us to conclude, each. And sometimes it's easier to dismiss insurrection as a fanciful meme. It's convenient to think that revolution is only for those lost in a dream. But what if we were to reframe all of that? Keep faith, dear fellow Iranians, and keep staying the course. Keep faith that optimism is a powerful force. You see, to really and truly believe in societal change, you actually need to maintain a fair amount of aspiration within range. You might say it is those who believe in revolution that are the true optimists. They are not the dreamers. Rather, they are putting themselves on the line because they understand fundamental change can come. Anything of major consequence that has ever happened in history came from redefining the possible. And there is nothing more omnipotent than the belief that this is a new dawn. And there is nothing more formidable than the belief that this year will see the birth of a new Iran. So don't get caught up in the worries about exact numbers on the streets or a day going by in silence. Don't give in to the fear that the Islamic Republic can crush the people this time with their trademark terrorism and violence. Because as long as we have the optimism and don't give up on the hope, it is the murderous mullahs in Iran that will be scrambling to cope. Keep faith, dear fellow Iranians, and stay the course. Keep recognizing that optimism is truly a powerful force. This past weekend saw the first inkling of an opposition coalition that is more than a dream. This is about the construction of a global, unstoppable Iranian A-team. And remember that no uprising in four decades has sustained in Iran the way this one has done. Remember that we've rarely seen this broken theocracy so fully and completely on the run. Remember that we know the names of those who've been victims of this regime and we will not forget. Remember that this global movement is still only a few weeks old and we still have a way to go just yet. But if you choose to think things are over and deflated and that our ambitions are all gone, then maybe you are the ones giving up on the prospects of a free and democratic Iran. Come on, it's a new year. Ring the bells and let's get to work. We've come this far thanks to brave women and men and positivity is simply a perk because hope is the ultimate revolutionary source and optimism is a powerful force. A special edition of Rook today, our first of the new year with broadcaster Kambiz Hosseini and writer and performer Banafshe Tahirian joining me. This is Rook, episode 228, The Uprising. Optimism is a powerful force. Right. Hi there. Happy New Year to all of you listening around the world. Happy with a bit of an asterisk, given the difficult uh, issues that are going on, especially in, in Iran. But um, but also Happy New Year because we look forward as well. Welcome to a new edition of Rook, our first for 2023. Hello, Shia. Hi, Azizam. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Uh, you know, we, we started the year with a couple of people on the bench here, unfortunately. <laughs> our uh, our dear Pega is down with uh, a fever of some Hello. kind. And Anahita, um, the, the uh, talented Anahita, our graphics person, is also not able to join us uh, because she's, she's um, not feeling so great. Uh, it's that thing that's going around. But... So get well to our team, but uh, quite a show we have for you. In a way, I want to use these um, these two uh, awesome guests we have today, mm -hmm. returning champions, uh, as a way to reflect on the year that we've just had, mm -hmm. take, take stock of the last few months, mm -hmm. specifically with respect to the revolution, 
Amy Rowan. Yes. Uh, and with respect to the sort of theme that I'm developing here about optimism and mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and hope and revolution, and to 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 look ahead mm-hmm. with them too. So first, or coming up in just a few minutes, first up is Kambis Hosseini, the yes. uh, the broadcaster, the TV and radio host, uh, comedian. I think he's really one of the best out there. Um, and we'll get his opinion. He doesn't appear on very many programs other than his own. Yes. yes, Uh, yes. So I'm uh, touched, honored that Combis is back to talk about uh, his, let's see if I can extract some opinions from him about uh, where we're at in the Iranian uprising. And later in the show, the writer, performer, podcaster, Banafshe Taharian. Mm -hmm. She, of course, has her podcast Chai with uh, Banafshe. Uh, She's coming up in the Rook studio and looking forward to having her here as well. She just posted this great poem that she wrote uh, um, and performed just a few days ago about um, women, the, this metaphor of the Iranian women as a bird that's been caged and mm-hmm. breaking the cage. And uh, uh, it's really fabulous. We'll talk to Ben Afshir coming up in the Rook studio. Uh, this Thursday, in a couple of days, three days from now, a special edition of Rook marking the third anniversary um, which is coming up this weekend of the that horrific downing of flight PS752 uh, in Iran. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll have a special guest and we'll um, speak uh, about that solely this Thursday. Uh, there's going to be a lot of memorials this weekend oh, yes. dealing with the third anniversary of that. It's interesting, you know, PS752, I often think of it as a Canadian, Iranian-Canadian mm-hmm. kind of event because, mm-hmm. of course, a disproportionate amount of those that we tragically lost, including friends that we knew, yes. were on that flight. And so I think of it very much as Canadian. But not only is it something that people around the globe are aware of, and there were folks who were living in different places of the world as well, Iranians from the States and, yes. uh, and England, et cetera, but also... Um, I hear PS752 invoked uh, a fair bit in this revolution, not just in Toronto or in Canada, but, you know, even when you you hear chants that are slogans that are coming out of Iran and people who are talking about, um, you know, their outrage at at what this regime has done in recent years and they name check things like Albon and they Mm -hmm. talk about Mm -hmm. PS752. This is, uh, and I think that's partly due to the persistence of the Association of the Families of uh, Victims of PS752 and keeping this, you know, in the forefront of minds around the world. And um, and they have a big role in, like, in all these demonstrations that happening, like the October 1st in uh, Toronto. Toronto, Berlin. Berlin yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was announced by them first. Uh, yeah, we, we owe uh, a, a, a gratitude to them for yes. the way they've kept... Um, because they're not just fighting for the memory of a never forget, never forgive about their own, mm-hmm. you know, uh, family victims, uh, et cetera. But they're they're really keeping this regime's feet to the fire, keeping a spotlight on yes. on the kind of atrocities that this regime is capable of, not just for uh, Iranians around the world, but for people non-Iranians around the world to keep to see and, and be aware of. So that's coming up on Thursday. We'll memorialize uh, and talk to a special guest about the third anniversary of uh, 752. Next week, I think I think we will not have any, any new editions of our podcast. Uh, so if you listen to us on one of the podcast platforms, well, there'll be a week off there, but you can continue to follow us on Instagram and our social media sites where we will be active and posting content. We have a, we're working on a couple of projects, including a very special guest in the coming weeks on Rook. So uh, stick with us. We are coming to you on rookmedia.com. That is where the, our website where you can link to all of our platforms. We are on this ongoing mission to build a new audiovisual encyclopedia of Iranian diaspora identity. We're on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Instagram, Castbox. If you'd like to see some visuals with Rook, as I say, you can switch over to YouTube right now and if you like your rook descriptions and bulletins um, in english and in persian check us out on telegram Uh, you can subscribe on any of those platforms and you can support us through our website rookmedia.com by uh, pressing the support us button all right should we go uh shia let's go to our first guest 
Well, my first guest today is simply one of the best and most prolific TV podcast and radio hosts in the Iranian diaspora, and I'm most happy to have him back on Rook. Kambiz Hosseini is the host of Paradox, a Persian political satire show and podcast that airs on Radio Farda. He's well known for co-creating and hosting the popular TV show Parazit. He was also the host of the satirical news program Politik. Kambiz has been the recipient of the Reporters Without Borders User Award, which honors individuals advocating for freedom of expression. He has been featured across many media outlets such as CNN, Fox News, PBS, and NPR. And right now, Kambiz Hosseini joins me from his home studio. Hello, sir. Hello, uh, Jian. Glad to be back. So it sounded like you. Can you hear me? I can. I can definitely hear. Can you hear me? Yeah, I just did this great introduction for yeah. you, and then you were there was no. A pause, I know, but so I, it it's just. It's just right at this time. Uh, um, like I, I don't want to give credit to myself and say who I am. You know, this is a time of. Uh, no name, no personality. I'm, okay. Uh, this is. It's, you, you know, prefer if I introduce I you without a name. No, no, no. This is this is the time that we're all in this together. We're all like, it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what you did, what you've done. This is this is a, this is basically a, a only time that my name, your name, anybody's name doesn't matter. Anymore. All right, we're See, all in this you're, together. This you've started already. You're making me look bad. By I, I, all I did no, was no, I'm, try, no, I'm trying. I'm no, trying to no, position no. you. You know that I, yeah, people have to know you. who you are. Yes, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate All that right. great introduction, Gian. I appreciate that. That's why there was a dramatic pause before you said hello. Anyway, I'm glad you can hear me. Look, uh, I'm I'm so glad to have you on our first show uh, in 2023 and the first guest. Oh, is it really? Wow, I'm so I'm honored. Well, it's January 2nd. How many shows do you think we've had? Is it? Uh, yeah. No, I, I thought you had a show yesterday too, no? No. Don't you guys show every day? No. <laughs> but thank you for being a regular listener. Um, we have sh- <laughs> we have shows twice a week. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and anyway, uh, well, okay. So look at I, but, the, but the reason I was excited to have you, I was past tense excited to have you as the uh, as the first guest of, of 2023 was that um, I, I feel like you know we have to sort of take stock a little bit. It's a, a new year's beginning. Uh, an old year yeah. has ended, and so I can truly think of no one better than uh, you to do that with, uh, especially given the dramatic events of the last few uh, weeks. And um, so let me start with this, all joking aside. My my, my sense is, Combies, that um, uh, like many of us, you've, you've probably been up and down in terms of your emotions about what's happening in Iran, and I, I just just now started the show with an essay entitled optimism is a powerful force how are you feeling as a new year begins yeah uh to be honest um i no, i heard somewhere that you in in order for you to be a, a broadcaster to be a podcaster to be in a media you have to be a giver you have to um you have to be a person who likes to give in order to love your job as as a person in media, you like yourself or or what I do, and I'm and I'm a person that um, I, I tend to you know call myself a giver. So um, what I give in my shows, exactly the same optimism. Um, there is no way. I mean, it, it, it was um, I think a year ago that um, I, I I wrote the essay. You know, I write essays <laughs> too, Jean. Yeah. I wrote the essay uh, saying that no depressed person could revolt against anything um so i i I keep keep going on that on that note and and let everybody know that we have to be optimistic and there are so many reasons to be optimistic uh at this point at right now i'm talking to you we have so many positive notes uh in this in this revolution that uh, makes all of us you know optimistic i'm sure we're gonna get we're gonna get into some of that but but so do you agree that i mean what i was just saying there in the essay that that sometimes especially as i find as iranians we uh again i don't want to go so far as to say it's in our dna but there is a tendency Mm -hmm. towards cynicism um or at least skepticism which which can be healthy but but i do uh, one of the reasons i wanted to write this essay is because i've i've I ran into a few people, you know, even this past weekend and, and, and last week who were kind of, you know, 
dragging their feet a little bit, saying, oh, there's, you know, uh, yeah. we don't, I don't know, and there isn't millions of people in the streets, and, you know, yeah. oh, not this time, valid, okay, yeah, we may, and, and you know, which is, um, which is like, I keep, as again, as you said in the, in the essay, we can't be day traders about revolutions, you know, you can't sort of sure. judge it on, at the end of each day, go, well, there, were, there wasn't a million people in the street today, so I guess we're losing, you know, it's it's got to be yeah. something that we sort of take take a look at over time, and, and I would say the last four months have been pretty impressive overall i mean uh, taking yeah, account the totally uh, atrocities totally. and the devastation totally. and all that yeah but uh, like you said it's not uh, it's not happening overnight revolutions doesn't happen overnight uh, it's a process um, in making um and um it, you know some people just because people are not on the street today nobody died today because of some 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 asshole shot them on the street in Iran. That doesn't mean that the revolution is not in progress. There are so many different fronts in this revolution that you see it every day. Yeah. Um, for instance, like a couple of days ago, um, um, a group of uh, people who are famous to uh, be the oppositions um, against Iranian uh, against Islamic Republic outside of Iran. They um, um, tweeted, um, yes. you know, um, a congratulations of of the, uh, the new year to the people with saying that uh, you know. Uh, they're showing unified. that they, yeah. they're yeah. united. So yes. that's 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 another. I want to actually get to um, that, but 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 I but I. That's I, another step to yeah. yeah yeah yeah. So you should look. I'm saying that stuff is happening every day um in this revolution that we should be proud of and we should be happy about i love what you, i love the way you just put it too that it's happening on different fronts you can't yeah. judge this by one metric you can't judge it by only what's happening on the street only what's happening in terms yeah. of strikes only what's happening at those the are UN. the soldiers those are the soldiers like you know those are the soldiers on, on the front line and uh, and then there is you and there is there's other people and everybody's doing you know what you can do is like doing this podcast like interviewing people putting lights on different uh, spots uh, yeah, that yeah. are dark and uh, and I'm, everybody is do, not everybody and you soldier, too I'm, you I'm told you do essays as well yeah. yes I uh, you know I'm, I'm trying my best I'm trying to do what I can <laughs> yeah. and what I'm and what I know you know I only know what I do you know a lot I'm a very you know like, a lot and you've been through a lot and you've and you've done a lot and yeah. and, I, and I kid you I I, I I thought in the introduction I know you know you don't want to be big up but I there's a reason one of you that yeah. you're one of the best out there because you bring a lot Thank of you. experience and perspective and I know that you fastidiously prepare as well let me ask you some Thank you general yeah. questions at the beginning of this conversation because we, we had the we last had you on the show very early in this uprising i think it was about um three months ago it was two or three weeks into the the revolution and yeah. I, I, so let me ask you um I, I guess i want to ask what you've been inspired by since then and what you've been concerned about so uh let's start with the positive first and just pick something mm. what 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 has inspired you, or if you can, what has most inspired you with regards to the movement for change in Iran over the last three or four months? To be honest, the, uh, this is not the first time that uh, I'm experiencing an uprising in Iran. And uh, what inspired me this time is that the mistakes that we made um, before um, are basically... Uh, was a source of lesson and education for people today mm. and they're not making those mistakes anymore and this this you know this inspires me a lot to see oh so remember like in green movement this happened and and the reaction was this yes. but nowadays i see that the reactions are so different we learned from our mistakes yes and uh, this is very inspiring yeah that's a great and point. we're not we're not making those mistakes anymore and that's great i mean the whole um, look, Islamic Republic tried to divide us for 40 some years and they tried to um, make every single person enemy of every single person in Iran. They, you know, they divide us so they can govern us. It's like an old saying. And, um, and this, is, this is not working anymore. This, this, yeah. this strategy of Islamic Republic and this dictatorship is not working anymore. 
and people are just ignoring the fact that they try to all these propaganda machines that they have and they try to uh, make this documentary about Ali Karimi uh, saying this about that guy saying that about the other guy and it's not working anymore and this is this is the positive this is the very very positive point yeah. it's such a good point it's it, it's like it's yeah. been 43 years of tutorials on yeah. on how how to not bring this regime down and so we exactly. we know all the things and by we I mean the brave young people in Iran mostly obviously who are in the front lines but they 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 know okay we're not going to do this this time we're not going to do that this time we're, including we're not going to put up with any bullshit about you know expecting reforms or the, these guys are going to yeah. change their stripes or something like that you know what the moment was for me if we're doing a little bit of retrospect in, of the last few months as sure. we start a new year the moment for me was and and it was just one thing but it's just it speaks so loudly as to both the education and the um, the the sense of global community, the unification of Iranians, especially yeah. those you know online who have been activists. It was the moment that, if you remember, this was of course the famous, uh, well, the, the now very famous, but the uh, the dissident, the activist rapper Tumaj Tumaj Salehi had been mm. arrested. And um, yeah. if you remember, after a week or two after his arrest, or sometime after, there was this forced confession video, and yeah. and that, nobody gives a shit about that. Well, well here, here here's the thing. Here's this the thing. Great. Here's the thing. Yeah. Not not only. I mean, that's as you say. One of the tactics of this regime for years yeah. has been, you know, uh, not only do you force the confession, which you know humiliates the guy and and whatever, and you got to wonder if it's real or not. But then that becomes the conversation, right? It's it's distracting the. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. And as soon as that hit the internet. There was a collective cry from the global Iranian community saying, don't share this. And what Perfect. happened? Yes. You can't even find that fucking video anywhere. I mean, <laughs> Iranians banded together and didn't share it. A, 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 yeah. a catnip, you know, a, a the kind of video that is exactly the kind of, you know, sensational thing that goes viral. Sure. Did not get this is shared. The this, yeah, that, this is the example of what I said yes. that we learned from our mistakes. Yes. Not, yeah. Well, that's yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's the moment for me. That was a yeah. That was, uh, yeah that's perfect. This is great. Okay. Hello, Nico. So, 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 Sorry. let me. What happened? Sorry, my dog is barking at me oh. over here. Sorry. Unrelated yeah. to the greatest. No, sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Wait, well, let me. Let yeah. me. Flip. Nico, sit down. Sit, Nico. Sorry. Uh, you know, there's Go a. Ahead. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, you you know you know the feature yeah. you the first interview of the new year. It's a. I'm just a. Didn't yeah, think, yeah. Didn't I'm, think I'm sorry, to put man. the dog, dog in another I, room or something. My dog doesn't understand that I, I'm, you're, I'm, I'm, I'm this important show. I just I thought maybe. Oh, I'm in this important. Sit down. All right. I just thought maybe there's another room or something that Niku could go into uh, <laughs> for the for the sake of this no, I don't, most important dog, conversation. <clears throat> let, let let me flip it around. Um, what sure. what has been the the greatest source or what has been one source of concern for you in the last mm. three or four months with mm. respect to the revolution? Uh, I, I, to be honest, I don't have any. And um, I, I don't like, even though I, I'm, I heard that Hamid Ismailion a couple of days ago said in one interview that um, we, we need to be criticized harshly uh, because we don't have another chance. This is this is our chance, and mm. we need you need to criticize us. But I don't have anything for Hamid. You know what I mean? He's doing everything perfect. He's you know, whatever he says, whatever he does, is great. So um, this is the guy that I I was hoping that we're you know Washington Post call him the morale leader mm -hmm. of of this movement. Jason resigned it, yeah. Which is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is a little bit too much, but but I, I did same, because he doesn't want to be uh, that person, or he doesn't want to hold that responsibility, because he has other um, uh, agenda. He doesn't. He never. He didn't started this to become a moral leader. He started this because he some something tragic happened to his family, mm. and uh, he wanted to aware the world. You know, so I so I don't. To be honest. I mean, I can come up with the stuff. I say things. I, I I see things in in Twitter, or 
or there are people that they're trying to uh, basically shift and change the direction of um, the movement um but they're they're very few what do you they're, mean by that they're not that much i mean for instance right now that like i said this unified tweet went out from mm-hmm. the 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 opposition figures there are people that look i don't like one of them or i dislike the other one or i like this one that one i'm like why are you this why is this is this bunch of group of people why this person is in it right. or the other person is not right. in it and stuff like that and um these are yeah these are maybe the could be the point of concern but it's so minimum it's, it doesn't affect well the, how, how about the, i bring up the point that was that was as i say part of the impetus for wanting to do the essay about hope and optimism is you know somebody yeah. was well more than one person was uh, over the past week saying to me look there there simply aren't millions of people in the streets in iran and that the demonstrations yeah. that were happening have slowed down so how how do you respond when somebody is concerned about the fact that there aren't there aren't uh, if anything the protest movement seemingly yeah, we need in terms of numbers, yeah, we need numbers has slowed in Iran. we need numbers yeah we need numbers but uh, by the same time um uh, you know it's uh, you cannot force people to form a revolution it has to happen organically and um if people are, and then you cannot one of the reasons why hamid is saying that i cannot you know force people to go on a street in, inside iran because all all the stuff he yes. does is outside yeah. um it's not just hamid saying that, that just, by the you way can't tell people, oh, I think, uh, that, because they been... fucking kill people man yeah. they kill people you know i mean if um we're, uh, people are fearless these days the fears are away and nobody's scared i mean t- today or yesterday uh you know you saw you saw a, a video of this kurdish um woman who just went straight to the forces yeah. and said fuck you to them so but you cannot uh, you know expect that everybody uh go and 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 just be ready to die for for the cause you know uh, people have different way of fighting this regime not like i said not everybody is soldier yeah, yeah we need like 10 million 5 million 3 million soldiers on the streets of tehran to overthrow this regime but i but i'm but i would say it it, it happens when it should happen you know yeah, yeah we all we all want them to gone today but we cannot force people to right, go on the street right. but uh, i mean and I almost hesitate to bring this up because I, I don't want to be, you know, amplifying something that's a downer. But but as yeah. much as we say people are um, fearless, um, there is a cohort yeah. who are the most fearless, who, you know, who have been the ones publicly who've been on the front lines or, you know, who've been putting themselves out there publicly. Uh, um, and especially those who are public names who've been doing so. And um, and they're being jailed. Right. And, and they're, yeah. they're, they're being jailed with, with you know, uh, regularly and, and, and anyone who publicly dissents. And, and we know the conditions are atrocious that the solitary confinement, the psychological torture, yeah. the physical torture. Torture. Do, yeah, do torture. you realistically, I, I asked this with some difficulty. Mm. I don't want to say this, but do you realistically think that putting so many of the, the major voices for the revolution inside Iran in jail has had an impact on the efficacy of the movement? Yes, I mean people. We, we hear we hear messages from from inside jail. From you know, people are not scared anymore, man. Even even uh, you, even uh, there are messages coming from inside jail that we're not afraid of you anymore. No, but my question and all was, the people, and all the people who come did, out. Did you understand my question? Right, sorry, but my question. My question Maybe was, do you, question. my question is basically like, if you if you jail all of these people. Then we don't yeah. have anybody on the outside who's actually le- leading the revolution. De- is is the is the revolution? There's no leader in this revolution. This, the, look, the leader of revolution is the is the slogan of the revolution, is the cause of this revolution. That's the you, you can you cannot jail women, life, freedom. Hmm. You can jail a certain person. You can jail eighty million people. Yeah, but even though they don't have the you know the jails to to put everybody in the jail, but the, the, I think the leader is uh, is the slogans is is what we're fighting for. That right. the, that's the slogan is the leader. So uh, I don't I don't think uh, putting people in jail ever worked from medieval era up to now. Never worked in the history. 
So they can do it. I mean, they tell people, the guy comes up next day and says, fuck you to them again. Yeah, They're saying fuck you to them from inside jail. So it definitely doesn't work. Well, it did. And how it, many people can you the, the fear How many people the, can you the, torture? The, weir, the fear worked in the past, sadly. Yeah. The slaughtering 1,500 people and, and jailing a bunch of people did, did work yeah. in Oban, Oban, if you if you want to put it that way. You know, it, it, it worked in terms of maintaining the, the, the this terrorist yeah. regime, you know, it, it, for, for another couple of years. But that was that was a step. That was a step. You yes. know, this, if, if you look at every revolution in the world, there's a, there's there are steps in the revolution. Okay. So okay. even even the even the uh, 1979 revolution has a, had steps that go back to wow the 40 years before that. So so I think uh, the, the the steps you know have been taken and this is this is another step and we cannot we cannot say this is the last step. We cannot say it's like it, it might happen tomorrow. They may they may be gone tomorrow. They may be gone in three days. They may they may not be gone. But what I'm saying is, we are this revolution is in progress and it's not going to go back. It's a one way uh, road towards freedom. But uh, but, but 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 with respect, I do believe what you quoted um, or paraphrased Thomas Smiley is saying. I do believe that 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 we can't fumble yeah. the ball here. Like this is, yeah. uh, e- even though I say I can't imagine the genie being put put back in the bottle, I can't imagine this this mm-hmm. this, this, this like, you know yeah. it's not going to be status quo. I mean, you can't. How do you possibly? Sure. But there are some less than auspicious directions this thing can go in, right? I mean, it's not it's not a done yeah. deal that the revolution is going to be won. It's just a matter of how much time. And so these steps that you're talking about are important steps, and they we we yeah. got to kind of get them right somehow, right? Sure, but I but the, but the, I, I don't know, man. I'm I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow, but what I know uh, is that whatever is happening right now, it's brand new for me. Um, like I said, being in the middle of the previous uprisings and um, being the voice of people all the time, and I see a lot of different uh, elements. In this movement, that makes me proud of being Iranian, mm. and uh, we're going to the right direction. And and but if it's happening tomorrow, we get the result tomorrow. I don't know, but I know that we're going towards the right the right direction. That's 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 all I know. What do you think of? I mean, one of the big events, ostensibly for those in the diaspora. Um, over the last few weeks, it was that um, UN special session on Iran and the fact-finding mission that has been initiated or is going to be initiated. Are you someone who is energized by these kind of things, or are you in that camp that is not exactly sure how that's yeah, going to be helpful in no, breaking I'm, down I'm, the regime? Uh, but you know, like I'm not. I'm actually staying away a little bit from what from like diaspora and all that. You know there are people doing it better than me. So this time around, I just I just want to do my podcast and and talk to people. You don't have an opinion Iran. on the UN special session thing? Yeah, but I, mean, I love what happened and I love what people do. There are people doing it better than me. I don't have to go. I that's okay. not my job to go in front of the UN and do that. Kind no, of no, stuff. I'm not saying you should go. I'm saying, do you think it makes a difference? Yeah. Yeah, it does, of course. Right. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, of course, it does make okay. a, anything we do make makes a difference, man. In the, even this podcast makes a difference. Everything, mm-hmm. anything we do, anything we do towards um, what people you don't want inside your. Right. Let me ask your personal sure. opinion about something. You like me what? are a football fan. Or a uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. World Cup featured Team yeah, Melly. What's the world? Mm-hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. You're a football fan? I don't know. What, what, what's your team? What's, what's going on? <laughs> Who are you rooting for? You're joking? <laughs> I talk about Arsenal yeah, too much. Ahead. I know. It. Okay. The world- oh, my God. Are you an Arsenal fan? I didn't know that. Yeah, since I was four. How could you be an Arsenal fan? This is the oh guy who claims God. to listen your to me Your team is regularly. doing well. Your team is doing well. The World your Cup. Your team is doing well but- after like 25 years. Yeah, go <laughs> it's ahead. It's true. Uh, the World Cup featured Team Melly. In the end, how was that for you? Oh, man, that was like a bittersweet thing. I didn't know. It's like I was <sighs> that. Would, uh, I was watching the game with the guilt, you know. And I, I, they, they, for the first time in in my life, 
تیم ملی اسکورد آیدن اسکریم and uh, for first time in my life team Melly conceived goal and I said hug to Saracen <laughs> <laughs> you know so uh, uh, you know I guess the face of Ramin Rezaian after he scored the second goal uh, uh, the Wales game it was like he, he was crying and laughing at the same time I think that was all of us sort of yeah I don't like this team Melly man I don't like these players I think uh, And, you know, at this time, I don't think they're going to go down as as a heroes of Team Melly or, you know, uh, this 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 group of people, they have to work towards um, getting back their credibility and come back to the, to the, the people. Do you think that's possible? But I don't. I don't th- yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, just like. Um, Um, what happened? What happened with Farouk Najad? You know, he he came out of Iran, and mm-hmm. you know, I think I think we should be receptive. Whoever comes and says, "I made a mistake," fuck them. I'm with you now. We should we should say yes, welcome, please. Yeah, yeah where do you, where do you draw the line? Stuff. Do you draw the line anywhere? No, no. At this point, no, no, no. Whoever comes, I um, I hug him. Right, see, right, see. I would, yeah. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> he says, "Okay, guys, you know what? Uh, instead of going to Venezuela, no, has, I want to come to hang yeah, out if, in the states, and I really, I'm, I'm sorry, like I've been wrong." Very, like, what know, is this question? Well, man? I, 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 he's I, not going to ever do that. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, no, I mean, the point is, is that for some people, there's red lines, right? There's, there's people who they believe, yeah, but he, the, enablers of the regime come, that they don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Ray has to come out. Take take out his uh, fucking Abba and Amma man and say, "Oh, I'm with you." And I've been listening to Michael Jackson all my life. <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> I would I would uh, say, "Yeah, man, yeah, come on, why not?" And I don't believe in God and fuck Amma. Yeah, right, man. why not? Right, mag better. Yeah, yeah, okay, I forgot. Yeah. So, yeah, he has a lot of work to do. Well, yeah, but so, but, but there's a, but you're saying there's a chance. You're saying you're, you're open to it. No, if I'm you, open. You, to, <laughs> we should be receptive to all the people. That you know, especially reformists, you know, oh. all the reformists that they, yeah, especially reformists, if if they and if they come and say, hey, um, we don't believe in what we said before, we don't believe in our action that we said before, we made a mistake, we thought okay. we could do something, we thought we could do this and that. No, we should say, yeah, man. Well, on, I see. Not? I see. Nyack today tweeted that they believe uh, in no. regime change. What are you bringing? All the controversial fucking. Well, I Nyack, you, with this, you brought it up. You said that you would, uh, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So you're saying But that Nyack you're open to them? Different. Sure, sure, Nyack. But did Nyack damage so much, man? Mm. They damaged so much. So I don't know. I don't know how much I can forgive. I do, I can't forgive Nyack. Okay. <laughs> you know, so it's some I mean, reformists, it's, uh, not all reformists, you're open to. The um, some some with hat in hand. Look at this wrong. point. Uh, to be honest, whoever comes and and shares a value and confess that it made a mistake, hmm. I would say we should uh, we should uh, welcome them with open arms. Do you do you believe that those of us um, in the diaspora have a moral obligation to be speaking out about Iran? No, you do not. No, I, I think everybody has uh, its own values, and not everybody, uh, you know, the people people run away from Iran for different reasons. Mm. And if you, not everybody, I I do. I feel the moral obligation yeah, because I, I love yeah. Iran. But, and but, I, but so and you I, don't judge I, somebody who's in your social media who's just kind of posting party pictures or something like that. You're you know, it's it's no, like no, to each no. their own. They're not. I mean, I just I just feel bad for him, but uh, that's it. That's I'm like the guy has, has no sympathy towards where he's from and you no know, to the right thing. You know, it's like it's it's doing the right thing now. If you don't share your party bullshit, you know. Hmm. But um, but I don't no I don't I'm not judgmental in social media. Fuck it's social the, media anyway. No, of course I'm not. It, it, you know, the, it, <laughs> it doesn't have to be just about social media. I mean, it could be somebody you're talking to on the street or somebody in your family. I, it's yeah, it's yeah. It, the hard part for me is the conundrum is because I uh, I think principally I don't want to say I'm going to judge anybody, including somebody who 
doesn't want to do anything to do with you know with Iran. But, yeah. But I at the yeah. same time I'm 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 keenly aware that the revolution ain't going to happen unless everybody's on the bus to a certain extent, you know. And so, um, sure. so we have enough people on the bus, man. Do we? We don't need those motherfuckers. That, we don't need those motherfuckers that they live in Toronto and they, you know, they 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 eat their kubi there every day and they're happy to not be political, uh, quote unquote. Hmm. We don't need those people. We you have don't enough think we people, need those for people this. And then, don't you don't huh? you think that? But really, because I feel like if all of those. Forget about Toronto. Let's talk about your country, the United States. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know, I feel like if if all of those Iranian Americans, including yeah. the the super super rich ones, um, Beverly were, Hills, but Silicon Valley, forget you know. Yeah, if Silicon all Valley. of them were yeah. on the same page, if all of them yeah. were were ready to lobby. I think you yeah. could you could potentially get because some of them already meet with Joe Biden and so you could potentially get yeah. movement from this American administration that currently, let's face it, seems like it's kind of hedging its bets. Not sure, maybe just still hoping for JCPOA. Not you know, I mean uh, that that's the difference. That's to me the difference. We saw it here, man. We saw it in in Canada. The, yeah, yeah. the, the government actually wasn't doing that much, and then they saw mm -hmm. you know eighty thousand people or whatever in Toronto, and and suddenly Trudeau was like at a demonstration the next week. You know, I mean, it's, they they yeah, they, yeah. they they do react when they see the numbers and the and the the power. So that's so Trudeau is a good guy now. An eye off on uh, the, the Iranians in 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 Canada. He's a good guy. Now, right? Well, it depends on who you ask. A lot of <laughs> he's, he's got a lot of fans. You think you, and yeah, and he's got the, a lot of fans. And on the other hand, there's people who believe the government of Canada should be going much further. I heard that if you don't uh, hold residency, you cannot buy uh, have a house in, in Canada anymore. Is that true? That that uh, is that true? Do you know that? I think so. Is that yeah, is right. that a sense? So is that a, I think uh, it just happened. Is that like a point a of concern for you? No, no, no. Oh, that, okay. That's yeah. good. So oh, that's, that's is it is it is it Trudeau is doing that? Look, Trudeau. Uh, you know what he did? He just sanctioned I IRGC for like many like ten thousands. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. of Sir Papa mm -hmm. And now if and, and they can't a, even buy a house, and, and we don't know yeah. all of their names, and the IRGC is still yeah. not fully on the terrorist list. I mean, I can uh, I could argue I, it both ways. I could also say, yeah. Compared so. to some European governments, the, the so Trudeau is not a good guy. He is a person. I, I think he's a, he's fine. No, no, as as like a as, look as, as as from the eye of Iranian diaspora. From the eye Canada. of the Iranian, from from uh, well, again, I think that it depends on who you ask. I think it's a split decision. Well, but if you're asking me, yeah. I would say I was profoundly disappointed in the Canadian government in the first couple of months of this. Because I, I are you conservative? Are you liberal or conservative? Who are you? I, I'm undeclared. You know, in terms of party preference. Oh, you're undeclared. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've never talk, talked undeclared? about. Well, it means I don't tell. I don't tell people who I vote for. Because I don't oh, think okay. it's helpful. In do you interviews. like gays? Do you, do you like marijuana? What's going on with you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I support both marijuana <laughs> and and any form of. I, uh, you know, uh, I said something orientation. like this in, uh, in uh, terms of in terms of being liberal in America. You know. Yeah, that people like, like you know made fun of me because right. I said being liberal in America is all about being if you approve gay marriage or more legalization of marijuana and abortion and mm -hmm. and, and then if you if you if you're for it then you're liberal if you're not then mm -hmm. I'm sorry you're mm -hmm. not liberal you know what well, yeah I see so you're asking me these questions That's, but you can't answer my questions about do you, do you yeah what is your question well. My, well, I might, the, the the original question was: Is there a moral obligation to be speaking out? You said no, uh, and I said, I said "Wouldn't I, it be I, great I, if everybody was I on board?" Look. You said everybody is on board, I and feel, I said, "No, they're not." Yeah, you know, yeah. I feel yeah. sorry for them that they think there is no moral obligation right now. Okay, but I don't blame them because uh, you know, stupid people should live in the world too. You know. Okay. What do you think of this new spate of political guardianships? I think this is a really cool idea. This idea yeah, that these but if, how does it work? I don't know. Is it like how can I don't know how it works. Well, from it's what just, I understand, uh, you get a parliamentarian, yeah. presumably in a major Western country, 
like a lawmaker. Do you think mm-hmm. they give a shit in like those motherfuckers that they torture people in jail in Nevin? They give a shit about this? Ah, this is they why I ask you these questions. <laughs> well, no, you're the guy who was no, doing. I just don't that you should know this better than me. I mean, what do you think? No, I don't think they give a shit. I I think it would delay the executions, the major people that they're getting they're getting executed. Mm-hmm. I think it would delay. The, the the mass murdering people on uh, in jail well then but that makes a difference it would, uh, if it does if, i mean anything if, yeah i mean because i was going to ask you that exact question combis do you think outside mm-hmm. pressure yeah. has blunted the regime's appetite for executions do you think there's some sort of calculation that we're not going to you know maybe we shouldn't be doing this because there's because i agree with you you know the track record so far was you know back in i mean uh Navid Afkari, you know, the world was talking about him and then they went and executed him, right? But but it is a different level of observance now on a a global scale. And I wonder if that's making a difference. I should hope it is, but I I, we have to see. We have to wait and see. This is the new thing for all of us. This is this is every this is new. So let's let's see what happens. Let's see if they go ahead and do whatever they 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 wanted to do and, and, and just ignore the the governments that they they don't, don't like you know like for instance right now germany is uh, like up in their ass they like they're eliminating everything they they held that thing in berlin and all the politicians are coming out and doing this mm-hmm. and that but if they decide to cut ties with germany they can cut ties with all those politicians too mm. and and just ignore it we'll see Oh, what I'm saying it depends if you know. Some, you know these are really ideologues. These are this. This is a dictatorship of. Uh, this is a theocracy. Mm. You know. Some if if they can always bring God and Imam Hussein and change everything. You know. What right. I mean. So um, uh, and say, oh, we don't need Germany. Fuck Germany anyway. We have China. Who gives a shit about Germany? Hmm. So, um, well, well, there was know. a guy we had on last week who was arguing, who's an expert in this area, who was arguing that if the United States was properly uh, applying its sanctions, uh, the U.S. would be able to coax uh, J- China, that ultimately wants the economic relations with the U.S., to stop um, buying all that oil from Iran and stop funding this yeah. regime. But, um, but that's what I, that's why I think. Uh, Iranian Americans play a role in wanting in you know pressuring their own government, the U.S. government. I I would I would say that yes, in in, in that regard, your government, in, in uh, my government. Yeah. Well, why are you laughing? Aren't you an American citizen? Didn't do. No, yeah, I am. Okay, I'm, I'm well, so do, you citizen. laugh every time I say that. I mean, you know, it's your no, no, because you say your country. Well, it's your, it's your, <laughs> you know? you know, your president, your country. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm. Uh, I like, I like United States of America, okay. and I like what's happening. I like democracy. Yes. Um, you know, I like many things about this culture, and I want Iran to be just like United States of America. Mm. With Chola Gabab, I, I like it. So, but at, at the same time, what what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is that. Um, if you you cannot blame citizens to not be proactive about their home country, in in, in countries that they're immigrant based countries like Canada and why not? And, why and, can't and, we blame people? states? Because people like immigrant uh, they immigrate for for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Not everybody you know wants. I don't. I, well, don't I, I, I think you cannot blame there people. Are some in, no, not in people, Turkey, there are some, but like, I mean in somewhere like the U.S. You're not gonna. You don't mm-hmm. actually. There's, you know, you're not going to be detained or somehow compromised by going out on the street and, just, you know, or speaking out or writing a letter or trying to, you know, get uh, Iranian uh, um, billionaires in Silicon Valley to to speak out against uh, the regime and try and pressure the the U.S. Yeah, government. those are I mean, parasites, man. Those are parasites. Mm. They, everybody, like soldiers on the street, die and change the society, and those motherfuckers come and make money again and again and again and again. Mm-hmm. So not 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 everybody not everybody is takes part in revolution. Not eighty million, like I would say, forty percent of thirty percent or forty percent of. I'm I'm just like, you know, yeah. coming up with percentage, mm-hmm. with no scientific background on it. I'm just saying, thirty or forty percent of the people in Iran are benefiting from the government, mm. and 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 thirty or forty percent of diaspora is benefiting from the Iranian government right now. Mm. So you cannot expect everybody to write letters to the representatives and do this and that mm-hmm. but we have enough people to overthrow the government we don't need them actually 
This is a, a most. Uh, I didn't expect this to you to be so optimistic. You really are well, optimistic. No, no, I would love. You know, I would love everybody to take part in this. No, but I, you know? I'm just. But you uh, you're, 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 it sounds like. I mean, to listen to you, everything's going the yeah. way it should. You, you, you couldn't. I can't. You can't come up with anything to be worried about. I mean, you're 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 in a good place. You believe that um, the the revolution is moving as it should. Sure. Yeah. Of course, uh, it should, and um, it takes time. We just need to be patient a little bit, man. We just need to be patient, but we have to get out more in terms of whatever we can do. And, uh, and what are if, those, if what's, what's something that we can do? Anything? Yeah, it's stuff that you said. You okay. know, mm. you're you're doing this diaspora uh, right. thing. Okay. You know, yeah. the theme of your show is diaspora. Yes. It's like, yeah, why diaspora this, yes. diaspora that. So, <laughs> so yeah, you know, the, the, what you do, like okay. what you're doing, you know, you're doing what, what do you, you doing, What do you I'm think of, did I'm you doing. see today that, that, um, that a bunch of actors, there's like 600 uh, actors and yeah. writers and directors now have uh, uh, yeah. launched a major public campaign. Non Iranian, most Good. of them, to Great. support Tarun Ali Dusti. No, a couple, like a couple of them, like Gol, Gol Shifte was yes. in there. Yes, and, yes, uh, yes. And Nazanin, yes. Son yeah, was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So um, yeah, that's good. That's great. That's another. That's an, like that's another step. Whatever we do outside is great. But what I'm saying is, don't you know? If the people don't want to get involved, then you know, they're like society has parasites mm. that, regardless of the regimes, they they do their own thing. And I cannot force that and mm. force those people to do anything. All right. Yeah, we don't need two hundred million people. To overthrow Iranian regime, we don't. We don't. We need oh. only probably ten million. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, uh, that <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's. Let's try and work on the ten million. You're yeah. talking. You're talking to an actor, comedian, podcaster. And um, this what, guy, I'm not. What are you I'm talking not an about? You're the, the, you're the guy who spent the last twenty years being the political. You know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but it's my opinion, opinion guy, and well, I, I, I'm asking your opinion, and you've turned into this yeah, mild mannered yeah. like you're like an NBC anchor now. You're like, oh well, uh, no, uh, whatever people oh, want to do. That was uh, the biggest insult. I, uh, uh, who am I to say? Oh uh, my god! I wish everyone a good NBC New Year. I, and, uh, I, I mean, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you call me an NBC anchor? How dare you? This is the first insult of 2023. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm not coming on this show again. <laughs> <laughs> you see. Well, I, I did. I mean, to you, a tough question was, hey, what did you think of Team Melly? And you're like, hey, I'll settle down with the questions. Uh, so. Yo, uh, but that's, that's like, it depends. It, the, the time, look, it's changing every day. I know. It, it, you know, that if you, if you, if you speak to me um, today, um, it, it, because of the, what's happening today, I may have an opinion about something today, know, but tomorrow is going to be I know. And, and, and I kid, I know. Ago. And by the way, I know it's a minefield. Yeah. Like somebody can take a line out of these conversations yeah. and make a big deal of it. And you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Uh, Please don't do that. Please no, don't no, take the no, line no, from my I, conversation yeah, don't and do put that. it on don't. Instagram and yeah. let people like attack me again. Don't do that. Please yeah. don't do that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah please yeah, thank don't you. do that. Um, <laughs> well, um, I mean, my final question for you is: What, what do you believe the next steps need to be sure. for this revolution in Iran? But I think you've you've suggested mm -hmm. some of those, and and um, I mean, overall, yeah. it sounds like. Um, it's actually a, an apropos. I really didn't expect because you know, honestly, I mean, I, I you know, I, I know you personally a little bit outside of when we talk on the air and we talk to each other, and mm. and sometimes you do seem kind of downhearted. I'm 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 actually energized by how I know you're not saying everything's perfect, but how you you mm. believe that this is happening. You believe that this is this is going. Yeah, to, you know, I believe this is happening. I'm very actually optimistic. I just. Uh, don't expect um, radical uh, results. Uh, it's it's been a long uh, journey for me fighting this regime. To be honest, I mean, I'm in my own way. Sure. And uh, I would, the I would you're in exile. To, yeah. yeah, I would love to see him uh, gone next second. Yeah. But. Um, um, I, th I think we made a lot of, but we we damaged them really good this time, man. And um, uh, we just need to be patient about it. If you're asking me to tell people what to do, well, no, no. to to make this to to overthrow the regime faster, I, I don't have an answer for you because I don't know. Mm. I wish I knew. 
No, um, I, I'm not telling you. I, what's no, on, but I, what, I know you what's, won't. What's do happening that. organically right now is great. It's perfect. What do you do? Do you hear? Uh, I'm so curious about because you have such match, this massive audience that's in Iran. Um, is there mm. anything you care to share about what you hear? What you've been hearing from people inside Iran that um, that has stuck with you or that? Yeah, has been to memorable? be honest, like I've been uh, I've been um, involved with. Uh, uh, energizing people and uh, about things that's happening to them and makes them upset and and down and uh because i have i have my own audience that they you know share their thoughts with me and mm. uh, i have a feeling we have to take care of each other these days man yeah. we have to uh, take care of our mental health yeah um because what this this is what they want to do they they destroy your uh, your mental health and and then you you don't know how to how to make solid decisions we have to keep sane um among all you know all these things that are happening we have to keep keep staying sane and mm. and, and that that's that was, that was that's the core of what they do these days to encourage people to to stay sane and and don't go insane that's yeah that's what i want to do how do you do uh, it for and, yourself because I, I this is huh? this burnout thing is stuff how do you do it i mean how do you do you have a, a regimen do you have a way of staying sane you know in in, uh, in, the, in the midst of should 20, I sh- do yeah. i have to share that right now well, like, you don't have to show and how you know? to i mean i mean i have my own like remedies i have my own oh. rituals and okay. stuff yeah mm. yeah any of them legal that and, you could uh, uh, or? <laughs> all of them legal all of them legal <laughs> no i like i like uh, i like music i um i like um barking on the beach oh. if, whenever i can mm-hmm. i do you um, limit the, the uh, time you look at I, your phone or anything do you, do you do that to be honest you know what i decided um in my new year resolution <laughs> i can share that with you to oh. whenever i go out i leave my phone home wow yeah that's this is the this is new me it's been two days yeah uh, i've been almost like 80 percent successful <laughs> on this but i leave the phone at home and you I mean you've already cheated home. on your resolution and within a, a day and i half? did already oh. once because of uh, stuff happened to my okay. neighbor and i had oh, to okay, okay. take it because, you know i love that but, but that's but, hard yeah 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 it's wow. fucking hard but uh it's been possible because because when you go out then you're too <laughs> then you're too anxious to come back soon <laughs> to see what happens what's wow. happening on your phone but um but let's see let's see how long i can do this maybe next time if I get invited on your show after this conversation, maybe um, you're I'll always, let you know about you're the, always how, how much progress. Uh, yeah. Whenever we want a balanced, uh, non-opinionated uh, guy to <laughs> just come and um, now listen. Yeah. It, it's always it's always a, a a gift to have you on the show, brother. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Man. I really appreciate what you do. I, I feel I feel I feel like home when I come to your show. I feel thank like you. oh my god. And you know what? I actually I, is, I love what you said about easy. wanting to bring positivity to the um, yeah to to the people who are your listeners, and I, I think that's a that's a beautiful thing. I'm sure that's thank that you. that really goes appreciated. Um, thank you. Um, but you know, I don't go on any shows i know you're you're the only person you're the only person i go to mm. you know to be honest i don't go anywhere but farsi english nowhere and i and don't what, go anywhere and what's the reason for that I, I just don't feel like talking too much anymore mm. anymore man I, I mean i have a show i talk you know i have yeah. twitter i have instagram if i want to talk i talk i mean why do i have to go and and there are other people who go um to other shows and doing it better than me these days mm. you know Whatever I want to say, some other people are going and doing it. You know, it's very generous. So, of you. I, very generous. Of you. Yeah, but but your show is different because I, you know, years I looked up to you and um <laughs> yeah. and I like I said I, I feel like yeah. home. I come here and I say whatever the fuck I want, <laughs> and I go and and then you you know and you're a nice person too. We chop it up and put put the negative things yeah. out there. Yeah, please chop it up. Take take the negative stuff away. Make me look good, like I always say. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kamis, thank you. Good. Take care of yourself. Thank you, man. Thank Warren, you so much. Uh, Salam Mubarak. Let's uh, here's Salam hoping Salam. for great Durud things. Durud Barshom, Salam Mubarak. Durud Barshom.
100 سال به ظاهر تیک کیر بود 100 سال بین سال ها نداریم دیگه توی نداریم این 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 نو این تو وایم استن دوستم وات دات مینز وات وات چه نداریم نه نه داریم وی اولویز کیلینگ 100 سال بین سال ام ماچ لاف بای اور چیرز مان بای Won't you wake me up tonight Cause this life I'm living Doesn't really feel like mine. This strange dream I'm dreaming If I Never thought you would leave I never thought I'd love to start again Somebody This is Rook, episode 228. The uprising, optimism is a powerful force. I'm Gian Gomeshi. For all things Rook related, you can go to our website, rookmedia.com. Well, our next guest is here in the Rook studio with me, uh, and I couldn't be happier. Banafsheh Taharian is a familiar face and voice for those in the Persian community who live in Toronto, or I guess live in Canada. She's an Iranian-Canadian writer, actor, voiceover artist, moderator, MC for a number of distinguished Iranian-Canadian events. She is the voice behind many animated programs, as well as TV and radio commercials that you may have seen, and most significantly, perhaps, she's the host of the popular podcast Chai with Ben Afshir. Ben Afshir has been using her online presence to increase awareness about the current uprising in Iran and right now. Ben Afshir Tahirian joins me in the Rook studio. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for having me again. Nice to have you back here. Thank you. Uh, and Happy New Year. I, happy New Year. We say Happy New Year. Yes, we say Happy New Year. Like, yeah, bad things are happening, but this is like... On my way here, I was thinking that last year, about the same time I was here, and I was talking about Shireen, which is like uh, one of the perfect best role model for Iranian women and girl uh, to know what they want, what they don't want to be strong and powerful, have their own voice. And I didn't believe that next year I will be here again and talk about powerful Iranian women who are rising again. So. I, and, and I should say, it, it sounds like a, a, a ridiculous, it sounds like maybe I'm being oversensitive or, or too politically correct to say, you know, should we say Happy New Year? But it is it is a strange time. You know, over the weekend, as people were saying Happy New Year, each time I would sort of kind of, it, there's, there's an asterisk on it. I mean, uh, you know, there's only so much happiness we can feel. And yet, uh, yeah. uh, as I say, I started the show with this uh, optimism is a powerful force. On your latest podcast, the one you released yesterday, you talk about the year 2022 being a very hard year for Iranians. So given that I've started us off today talking about optimism, how are you feeling as a new year begins? I feel that it, it, 20. 23 will be the year for Iranian women and girls, I guess. Like, I wish this year is a girl is a year that with no cage for girls and women, doesn't matter of what nationality they have, if they are Iranian or Afghan girls, this is the year without cage, or like, this is what I hope for. You're hoping for it, or you think it will actualize? It will happen. It will? It, it will. So then 2023 is a big year. I, I was never as hopeful or as like, I hope and I think that is, it is happening. In Farsi we say, uh, it is happening. Translate that. Uh, it, it, Not it's, for me, it's, of it's, course. I'm amazing at my first. <laughs> yeah, I for know. The, <laughs> for, the, for the crowd out there, that the doesn't crowd out there, that it, it doesn't matter. Like it, it will take time, but it will happen. Uh, uh, let's go back four months um, because this is the first chance, at least on this program. I've seen you, of course, at a few events or, or some gatherings, but um, this is the chance, the first official chance I've had to talk to you about this. What, Madam Shijan, what what impact? did the killing of Massa Amini initially have on you? What emotions did it bring to the fore? What happened to Massa, the way they killed her, 
this was something that is happening to Iranian girls and women. It was not something new, but I think that was the point that Iranian uh, women say said enough is enough. Even for myself, when I saw her picture, I felt like uh, this is the time that I should say what I kept for many years because I was seeing on social media that they are saying that, okay, you have to see what she did, what happened to her. And I was like, no, this is what is happening. We don't this. need to guess what exactly. happened. Exactly. Right. Like, I don't know if you saw the post that I, like two days after this happened or maybe like one week after that, I don't remember exactly. I post an article and I said about the time that I was whipped from the back of my neck to my ankles just for being in a party. Mm. And for many years, I was like, I didn't even, I didn't even want to think about it. It, it is like you open a wound again mm -hmm. and I thought that, okay, I should do this and this time I should tell hold my tears back and tell mm. what happened exactly for all these years like compared to what is happening right now that, that what happened to me is something simple but it's, it's funny because i mean i was uh um i was asking this question wondering or hoping that you would bring this up because I, it's it's an awkward thing to say tell me about the time you were tortured you know uh, <laughs> at the beginning of an interview but but uh, of course, I read that um, that post of yours, and and um, and if you want to, if you if you're with your blessing to open it up and talk about it in the space, um, I want to ask you two things. I mean, one to to give us some sense of what this regime has done. You know, you can tell your own story, but but also, you know, we you and I talked in that first week, the first few days after yeah. Massos uh, was killed, and and it was very difficult for you. You were you were obviously distraught and upset about what had happened but you were also conflicted about whether you should speak out you were worried about your mom exactly. you know i said come on the show you said i'm not sure yet um tell me about the decision that that moment that you then made to speak out and and to go ahead with that post and to tell your story good question uh, like after seeing what happened to massa i was like I should tell, I should tell. And I started writing about it, which was really difficult for me. I said that I didn't want to think about it to remember what ex exactly happened to us and what, how they uh, assault verbally and physically me and my sisters and the other girls and boys that were in that party. So I wrote it and I always, when I write something like this, I, my mom and my sisters are the one that I recheck everything with mm. them to make sure that if I can post it or not. So I told my mom, mom, I wrote something. I want you to read it at the time she was here. So I told her that I want you to read it. I'm telling you, I'm gonna publish it, but I want to know what do you think? Mm. And I was really worried that she says, don't post it. So I was waiting, I was sitting there and she was reading it. She finished and she said, post it. Mm. And it was a relief that I can do it. And at the moment that I posted it, it became so viral that, you know, with that, it, it, it was at the time, it was really difficult to talk about it and dealing with what is happen happening, what was happening after that. And mm. I called, I, I received a call from you, from BBC to talk about it. And I, I, I wasn't there to talk about it publicly. Mm. And at the same time, my mom said, you know what, your sister is in Iran and mom, you did your part. You wrote it, so stop. So I thought that okay, maybe I can give my my myself some time to yeah. adjust what is happening after that. And even after that, I wrote a post about what was happening to girls in Iran mm. in the schools, uh, which is horrible, mm -hmm. unbelievable. So day by day, I found that power to be able to talk about mm. it. I found it in myself. I put myself together to be able to talk about it. But at the, at the first, um, it was difficult. Like I wrote something that happened in two days in some lines and it was again, even writing it was torture. But it's such a, it's such a great um, symbolic, uh, representative of what of what of so much of what's happened for Iranians um, 
I was going to say Iranian women, but for all Iranians, exactly. really, in the last three or four months, this catharsis of coming. You know, we had somebody on the show a couple of weeks ago or three, four weeks ago named Massa Townsend, who who basically has been living in the states for forty years, denying she's Iranian. Like, but you know, not denying it, but not but, yeah. not wanting to explore that side of her. She'd repressed so much, and it's bringing so many emotions out for her to now be speaking out every day uh, for Iranians, and and so this has been this moment where, um, like you, for all kinds of reasons, some personal, maybe some political, whatever it might be, some just trying to get on with your life, you've suppressed this story, and this was the time to tell it. Um, without getting into it, we don't, I mean, the details are, to a certain extent are inconsequential, but but just so that people who haven't read your post know, know what we're talking about. You were at a party, yeah. and I mean, it, 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 these these stories are so ridiculous, uh, ridiculous. Uh, if they're not if, if not outrageous but tell tell us briefly what happened like we were in a party it was uh, one of our family friends celebration because he was uh, suck, uh, like he was accepted to the university and he was a celebration for that his parents were there his aunts were, uh, his aunts were there that she was pregnant and she had a little girl a little boy with, with herself and in we Tehran. were there in Tehran and our parents uh like drop us off there and they knew we are at the party i was with my sisters and my and my brother and suddenly in the middle of the night they crashed into the party and they pushed us into a room and they took us to the uh, custody and they kept us there for two days and this is horrible they they told us that if any of you at the moment that they got into the place they told if any of you call your parents we will keep you forever and it was a scary. And at the time, we didn't have cell phones. So I remember that I Why find would they say that? You tell me. Mm. To, like, make people more scared. Right. Like, see how devastated would be parents who cannot find their kids. Right. Like, well, what they are Let's doing isolate right now. isolate you. Yes, yes. What they're doing right, right now. Right, right. Yes. This is the same story. Yes. And they took us to the custody. And the, 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 we were lucky that I, at the room that they kept us, I found a, a, a telephone there. I took it, I went to the closet, and I called my dad, and I told him what is happening, and he said, I'll be there, don't worry, I'll be there. He came, and I would see that my my fathers were following the car that were taking mm -hmm. us to the custody, and he was, the, the guy who was uh, like beside the driver, he was saying that before Tamir Zahra, if that car is the parents of any of you, I will keep you forever. Right. And they took us there, they kept us for two days in a small cell, dark, cold, and after that, they got us in something which they called, I, I would not say it, it was a court, <laughs> judge. Yeah, right. He was the guy who was there to torture us. He, by the time they got there, they took a, a camera off, uh, from us, and they told us to sit, uh, and the guy who, he was playing the video that they, from the night and he stopped it and th in, in the video I was dancing and was someone, that I was going to ask you what the crime was yeah the, the crime, crime was, was that, that I, you was, were, I was dancing right, and uh, right. like my third cousin he was playing tone back and he was singing Banafshe Banafshe and I was dancing and mm. he said who is this one and I didn't stand I just said that's me he said stand up Maimun and I stand it up and he said uh, what is your name I said, I'm Ben Afshe. And this is what they call you in a in a, in a so-called court, court, right? Exactly. They're calling your names. And yeah. You, yeah. And I said, uh, it is Ben Afshe. And he said, uh, sit down. I don't know how to translate Mordeshur. I don't know, like it is. Yeah. Whatever. Um, so I sat and they did the same with all the girls that there, they were there. And a woman was there, which I never... Had they just... Uh, were they just... Uh, they just detained the girls or the boys as no, well? No, no, we were separated. Uh, so it was just girls and women. Uh, we were at the room. It was a guy and he was like... I don't know. He, he the, the other guy was his secretary and it was the woman who was there. And she was the most brutal woman that I've ever, ever, ever seen. Mm. The, the guy was saying that... Okay, sit down. And the woman was there, and she said that Hajarov, you have to take them to um, to their own street and whip them there, that it become a lesson for the neighbors. And I, I couldn't believe that. What did I do to you? Mm. How, how, how much hate? Even now that I'm saying, I'm yeah. still shaking. <laughs> so after that, they. Put and this is a woman saying this to you. Yes, this is a woman saying this, and. 
they, they, he just put a paper in front of us and he said that, sign it. And there was nothing there but my name, nothing. It was just a white paper and our names on it, nothing. And I said, what am I signing? And he said, oh, you have question? Take her to custody for three months. And I was like, okay, whatever it is, right. I sign. And we signed without knowing that he is ruling to uh, whip us, each of us, 60 times. And they took us um, to a place downstairs um, from what they say they call court. And it was at a dining table. Mm. And uh, the, the, the guy told us to lay, uh, lay from you, on your face to the dining table. And uh, the lady, uh, like lady, the, the woman, mm -hmm. uh, she was there with a, a leather uh, whip. And she started uh, whipping from the back to the ankle. It was like one, two, three, four. And um, by the time he got to 50, I like all I had was think, I, I was thinking that if I don't scream, um, I will make them feel not, not happy. Mm. I'll, so I'm not gonna scream. By the time she got to 50, the guy said, uh, ma'am, you're not whipping her uh, as hard as enough that she screams. And she said, oh, okay, I'm gonna whip her with the other side of the whip. And all I could, could like explain what was it, like at the other side of the whip, it was uh, one of this metal cap of the bottle that you have mm -hmm. seen, like Jesus. something like that yeah. was at the other side of the letter. and. She started weeping with that, and she didn't say, I was waiting for 51. Just imagine, like, I was a 19, 20 years old girl, and she didn't say 51. She said again, one. <sighs> and I thought she's doing it from the beginning. She's counting from one again. So by the time she got to four, I started screaming, and when she got to 10, she said 60. And I was so... Uh, humiliated that I screamed for that. I still regret that I screamed for that last seven weep. Why do you regret that? Because I didn't want to show them that it is hurting me. I, 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 I just want to say, I just want to show that I am, I don't care. Like you have seen when, you, 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 you don't know what to do. The only thing that when, when um, when someone is hurt, torturing you or hurting you is that like you want to show that it, it's not painful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like you're strong enough mm -hmm. it will not break you and i felt something broke inside me at the time and i was humiliated i was insulted i was angry everything a mix of worse bad feeling that you can imagine and um even my sister, my younger sister, she was screaming and she was scared so much. And uh, m the other sister of me, she's she's the stronger than me. She told the woman there that whip me bes instead of her. She she's so little, she cannot uh, and she cannot uh, she cannot stay there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the woman said that no 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 no, um, I should whip her and this way the, her sins will washed away. Yeah, I mean, there's so it's there's there's the lack of ethics in the form of punishment and all that. But that but then the, you just have to keep reminding yourself the context of this is you were dancing at a party. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's madness. And I I would say that this is what is happening to not just me. After I wrote that article, I received many messages from yes. different uh, women in Iran that this, even men in Iran, that same happened to them and they even were not allowed to talk about it and even they didn't tell to their parents what happened to them mm -hmm. because like I, I grew up in a really open-minded family and my father, he was really like open-minded man my mom always was a supportive woman there but i had a lot of friends 
that I heard from them that their father told them that follow the rules very accordingly because if they take you to custody I will not come to re- release you why do you think they didn't love their daughters of course of course they love their daughters but when they got there to release their kids they would insult the parents as well right. and it, it, it is awful that's that's why like girls didn't even talk about what what is happening to them schools in Iran I say it is like a systematic systematic uh, brutality misogynist uh, society there at the schools like how can you like imagine we were like some girls in the school and we were not allowed to have a small mirror with us in the school they will search our back to make sure in the beginning of the day like when you get to school you need like to feel it is the yeah. word that you were yeah. you will grow you will be happy make dreams in the first you get to school the first thing would happen to girls is that like they search their, their back mm-hmm. to make sure you don't have mirror and then their face to make sure they didn't remove their facial hair and then your nails and then um, your like your eyes if you don't have any lashes on your eyes nothing like but it's also uh, your story is um, um, first of all resonates with so many people as you say but but it's a reminder that um, since it's what two decades ago now or something or you know it's a while ago that that what they what this regime is doing now even in their most atrocious moment you might say is actually not new all of the elements of your story um, the sham trial um, the the psychological and physical torture um, uh, the, 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 the 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 fear tactics um, all of it is is what's going on right now exactly. uh, and and is is um, part of the reason why this explosion exactly. uh, is of of Iranians around the world is to say you know no actually we're not just pissed off about mass I mean we're pissed off that you've been doing this for 43 years exactly and now the the dam is broken right and this time uh, like the beauty is that women are rising and at the same time men don't want to steal it from them mm. they they are trying to uh, support, hold their back support, and support yeah. them yeah. like all these years this thing were happened to uh, girls and women in Iran and what happened the, the women would go to the stadium again and they will like they don't care if we have to wear forced hijab they didn't care if we were like lashing for our uh, hijabs they would force their job i mean and but now they're like th- th- everyone are saying yeah. that th- that beautiful slang that we have woman life freedom and it, it is we are united and that's the beauty it's, of this revolution that beautiful slang as you call it is quite poetic and it's a good segue to 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 ask you i mean your the subject matter of your podcast is an exploration, a celebration of Persian poetry. Where does your passion for those great stories, for Persian poetry from our past, intersect with the current movement, if it does at all, uh, these days in Iran? Can you draw linkages between our poetic icons and the desire for change today? As a storyteller, I always say that the people who learn their own stories when they would not get lost in other nations' stories. We needed to learn Shahname, Khosrow and Shirin. Why? Because we had brilliant, uh, powerful women, like women in Shahname. I could tell you, Gorda Farid. Like I can give you many examples. Gorda Farid, Sudabe, Rudabe, uh, Manije, Shirin, Tahmine strong women who would follow their dreams and would would go for what they want but all these years we were like i as i say like uh women in Iran, what happened is like what happened to birds a thousand years ago mm. that they put them in a cage th- with their wings broken they they voice taken and i, I should explain the, let me i sorry to cut you there um just to 
as a sidebar, you wrote and performed a beautiful piece about Iranian women recently, and it uses the metaphor of Iranian women being birds who've been caged and suffering in silence. Um, and I and I I see I guess you you see this this moment and this movement as a breaking of the cage. Exactly, as a breaking of the cage and believing in uh, unity that we are see more that in all our stories are talk about which is the bird who has name but n- no sign which is like the reason of everything but unnoted and we are see more uh, we when we shout each other's names when we support each other we are that see more that we are looking for and yeah uh all these years, all these, I can say that our, our generation was caged. And mm. together and yet apart from each other, we slammed our wings to the cage in hope to become free. And some alive, some unfortunately not anymore. But here we are now, uh, this generation that I can say our generation raised our strong strong girls who have dreams and they have a heart as brave as a lion and they are fighting for uh for everything that has been taken from them you're an actor uh you're the a lot of performers actors have been at the forefront of of this movement and by the way you've got a um a couple of shows coming up including one called english yes. for people who are in toronto or montreal they're going to see you uh, be able to perform in this stage play in the coming months um amongst the people who have been courageous and who have since then been detained or arrested uh and we don't know what else now uh, is um Tarun Ali Dusti uh the great uh, Iranian Actors. actor um you know she today there was a post by um the actor Mark Ruffalo reminding us that over 600 artists worldwide i think it might have been started by Emma Thompson also another actor who have signed an open letter calling for the release of this award winning writer and actor Tarun uh, Ali Dusti uh, Tarone is, of course, known around the world. Do you think this kind of global outreach from non-Iranians, especially, represents a new level of recognition about what is going on? Exactly. Like I say that people in Iran are in front line, and we immigrants are forcing non-Iranian to admit what is happening in Iran, because uh, some of them were not aware of what is happening in Iran, like 10 years ago with the protests that we had, two years ago, what happened in Aban in Iran. Uh, it happened, but they shut down the internet and no one around the world would notice what is happening in Iran. Mm. But right now, uh, they cannot ignore it anymore. And they, and I always say, like I, I remember if it, if it was, uh, Clinton, which says, Hillary Clinton, which says that uh, women's uh, pr- problem is not like just women problem. It is a hu- human issue mm. and humanity issue it is. And now uh, all around the world, people know what is happening in Iran and supporting it, make governments to not do anything wrong more or like do not support the government who's ruling in Iran. They do not support does it, Iranian regime. Does it bother you on some level, Manasha, that um, that artists like actors, musicians, etc., are the ones who are almost expected to be the ones stepping up at times like this uh, um, as opposed to um, other folks, prominent folks in society? To be honest, I always think that art is like... Uh, Art is when you show your uh, inner thoughts, your feelings, your experience. And an artist's weapon is their art. Mm. And if you don't show what is happening in your society, so what kind of artist you are. I think that artists should uh, be with their people and like 
be show what is happening in Iran. And of course, yeah, there are more pressure. But you can't that. you can't play a concert or do a show that's shot like a happy kind of uh, a play without referencing this. So you would be considered a, a a bad faith actor to do that. Whereas, to be honest, I mean, that, how, how we can be happy well, if you feel inside. Well, well, but this that. was the contradiction when the World Cup was happening. I was just speaking to Kambi Soseni about the team Meli. Um, something that was niggling at some of us was that if you're a filmmaker, you're not allowed to make films. If you're, con- you know, you're not allowed to play concerts right now unless they're only about the politics. Or but Team Melly gets to play at the World Cup and, you know, let's have a debate about whether we should celebrate them or not. You know? it, it does seem like there's a contradiction there in terms of the expectations of who's supposed to speak out and who isn't. We wanted to leave one time chance of a life. We, we wanted, like, all other people around the world. We wanted to leave this one-time ch- chance of a life, to leave it. But they, like Iranian regime, took it from us. Mm. Us, s- sport, uh, like people who are like athletes, uh, artists. And you had like really good uh, athletes here at, at, like, at your program, which athlete, women, around, like Iranian athletes who were not allowed to fight Yes. Even men who were not allowed to uh, fight or yeah. who were not allowed to celebrate or d- like they made life difficult for everyone and us uh, artists, us uh, like those who are athlete make it more difficult for them. Like you're an artist. This is the way I leave. Th- my art is my business. Like you are an engineer, like computer engineer. In the morning you go to, 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 to your work you do your job, then you kind of like post something mm-hmm. and no one blame you for not doing anything. But if you're an artist and you're like, your your car, your your job is kind of like, your your art is not kind of like, it is a happy art, I can say. Like it is entertain, mm-hmm. entertainment. Mm-hmm. You're like, you're an art artist, so what you do is like entertainment. You're not allowed to uh, perform anymore. Not that just, you, you don't feel happy people expect you to not do that. Like, well, let, let me let me rephrase it and ask it a different way and ask you exactly the same question I asked Kambis, which is, do you believe um, that Iranian, it's 2023 now, you know, the, the movement is in play, there's people who've been arrested, there's people who've been executed, um, depending on who you ask, the revolution is happening or dormant or, you know, um, um, in danger of, of falling apart, whatever. Do you believe Iranians around the world, including those in the diaspora here in Toronto, whatever, have a moral obligation to be speaking out about this? Of course. You do? I believe Iranians should talk about it. Your friends who are on social media who are not posting about this, you think they have a moral obligation to? No, I'm not not disagreeing. No, 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 no. Like, I, I don't think that everyone should, like, every day they should post something about what is happening in Iran. No, life goes on. What should they do? They, they like they, they kind of I feel like they they can respect what is happening and leave the way they think is the best way for them to leave. I cannot like I don't believe in forcing people. Mm. We are talking. But about wouldn't the freedom. revolution happen if everybody took uh, you know was was speaking out at the uh, same of time? Of course, but what we are saying is like freedom of speech, mm. freedom of choice. We are talking about freedom. Yes. like let people choose what they want to do how they want to leave you can choose to be their friend so or when not you said yes be. initially to the question what were you saying yes to no i thought that you were talking about the artists or athletes who are, who have a voice a platform a platform okay so if you have a platform yeah do you think if you're an influencer masana mm-hmm. do you think you have a moral obligation to speak out i think yes you have to talk about it like I'm, if you like how you become popular hmm. <laughs> By these people. Mm. And if you don't want to talk about what is happening to these people, so how you became influencer. So if you have that platform, you have to talk about it. What did you think there was news over the weekend with a coalition of opposition leaders posting sentiments together at the same time? Um, You've obviously seen this. There was a lot of excitement about this. Uh, There's the, you know, there's also as ever in the Iranian community, it's pe- some people who are unsure or don't like some of the people or whatever. How do you feel about this coalition idea? To be honest, I'm happy. I'm happy that it's happening because 
like people who, who says that if they go who will come let them leave first mm -hmm. let let's do something oh and you mean the regime if the exactly, regime goes the regime we'll goes like we, we hear that question that who will become if the regime goes who 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 will rule the the country i'm like they're they're like all these years what they did just ruin the country and ruin people's life and now how much worse can it be the, exactly how much worse can it be and now this community yeah it is different people individuals it is and but i think these days we are more knowledgeable that like we have more knowledge than before and we have we are more educated than before so it is not easy to ignore people or decide something without having people's support mm -hmm. so i think it is good that it's happening because i think that yes um non-iranian government need to talk to like someone need to know least. who to talk to exactly who yeah. to talk to yeah and so, and for it to not be the mek or something exactly yeah. like yeah. who to talk to uh -huh. but why by this committee like i i i hope that they find a group of people group of individual a committee that they can talk to and hmm. see and ask what your people want and yeah. what do you want to me it was very powerful yes. it was a it was a very poetic and and um simple exercise you know it wasn't like let's take some uh Four hot, hot photos talk, together exactly. or something it was just like we're gonna post this and 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 you know why it's important it's important because you know each one of those people has a significant following and within that following there are people who are chirping about the other you know i don't like this person or i'm gonna support my guy because i don't like that woman or whatever it is and to see that kind of unity amongst them um, is very powerful, and, yeah. and I think it's the next, you know, it's the next chip to drop. It's the next domino to fall, um, because seeing these, it's just it's powerful. Even just seeing their faces together, you go, whoa! Exactly. Look at, look at this. This is like the Super League. It's like the you which know, is yeah. which is beauty of it. Like we always say, like we we need a government like ha like d people from uh, different. Uh, I don't know, like ethnic uh, would ha should have voice, different uh, like individual from uh, different uh, communities d need to have their voice. Yes. So this is beauty like of what is happening. Not just one person decide for a country. Yes. So and it's a, it's a strange thing. It's a, it's again, it's something that has I was thinking about it over the weekend. It, it would it would feel forced or fake if it was if it felt super prescribed but we've now had four months of uh each of the people who and i'm not saying this is the perfect mix or there should be less or more i don't even want to get into that just the fact that each one of these people has demonstrated a consistency a pedigree of caring you exactly. know so it's not like somebody's just been handpicked and thrown into this because uh, i like this guy you know they, they've everybody's shown that they're they've they're each committing their life to this right now and, and so they're open to like see people who are living in iran like the, the talk and make the community bigger I with hope them. So. I like hope the, so. this community bigger with the, like I heard that they were t like with a um, the, the, I I don't remember if it was uh, Mohammed who was saying that we are we are looking for people in Iran mm. to like add to this committee and uh, like at least like people can say that at least there is one person yes. in that uh, it can't just be the diaspora exactly yes, there is yeah. at least one person that you follow or you like and well on that note as a final question i i'm glad we sort of went there in terms of the people inside iran because i'm curious to hear from you because you've got this popular podcast and you interact with your audience to a certain extent what what are you what are some of the most interesting or maybe most moving things you've heard from your followers or your fans or your um hambatan your people um who who are engaging with you in social media to be honest uh, when you immigrate and you become an immigrant this past years was like if you're an immigrant you don't have voice you cannot talk about iran anymore you're not one of us and uh so be silent but now or like 
I remember that for, for the uh, football match that was happening before the uh, mm. revolution. Yeah. Do you remember that? The, yeah. the, 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 the one in Vancouver that they canceled? Exactly, yeah. that they yeah. canceled. I was posting on my uh, Twitter and uh, like Instagram that it shouldn't happen. You have to like support not happening it. And the, I received many messages from like even immigrants that you are not living in Iran. Why you're taking this from Iranian mm. people? You're not in a place to talk about. And the beauty of what is happening right now is that I hear from people in Iran that we love you mm. and we love what immigrants are doing right now. And you are part of this country yeah. and they wish us to like, come back to Iran and they they are they are happy that w- we became one again yeah. and like we all w- w- as Nezami says همه عالم تنندو ایران دل and this is Iran is a heart it is our heart excellent well, well said it's the same reason if, if anybody says to me uh, what difference do you think you're making or, or why are you focusing so much on this what are you guys doing um, I say because the people inside Iran who we've had on the show uh, some of them the brave young people who we change their names and put them on the show so, say that it's making a difference that, yes. that they care that we're doing this that's all I need to know exactly. that's all I need to know exactly this is what what makes me happy and they say like this gives us energy so do whatever you're doing. We are happy that you're doing, and I feel that I'm. I'm again. We're doing something. We're doing mm-hmm. something, and we are part of Iran. Like we are Iran. We are together, and this is this is beautiful. I I I I, I immigrated, but it doesn't mean that Iran is not my heart. It is, and I happy. I'm happy that uh, people in Iran feel the same and say that. <laughs> but Shijan, it's always a. A great pleasure to have you in the studio. Thank you. Um, Salano Mubarak, uh, have Happy New Year, and and um, good luck with your these plays coming up. And thank you. we'll continue to listen to your podcast. And thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. Banaf Sheh Tahrian. Uh, check her out at uh, her podcast, Chai with Banaf Sheh. She's been here with me in the Rook Studio. And this is full time for our inaugural, our first uh, program of 2023. Thanks to the amazing team who put this show together and all our programs together each week. Savvy Roham, talented Annie Hita, get better. Super Patty Saw, Smart Pega, get better. Alai Marathad and Groovy Shaya. Thank you to all of you out there supporting us and sharing our content. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. You can find me on Instagram at Gian Gomeshi Mizunbashi. <laughs>